Uh, welcome and uh, good morning everyone. My name is Johnny Ulan and I'm from New York. Uh, I'm tasked to introduce my fellow friend here, Dr. Lena B. She's a professor at the uh, ESBIA, Graduate, Studies, Graduate School of Public International Public, Public and Inter International Affairs. Mm. I still remember when I was in uh, Master Mechanical Engineering a long time back when I was at Pitt. I uh, used to cut work in my studying mathematics and everything and so I started that's the ESPI library is my library <laughs> and I pick up the uh, journal of foreign affairs and mm. oh, this is <laughs> subject actually <laughs> it's too late for me to change the subject uh, Dr. Lenardi is a professor in ESPI and she is also the founding director of this Center for Analytical Approaches for Social Innovations CAASI an incubator of community engaged social justice projects that combines both human center and quantitative uh, approaches. So are you ready for some mathematics here? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's good uh, um, timing before lunch. Um, and she's uh, uh, earned her PhD in social science from the Caltech and had an experimental work on pro-social. We don't know what Pro-social means looking up very interesting definitions. Pro-social behavior and social services, and has been her works have been published many times. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be very interesting. Thank you for coming. All right. Downloading, um, let me give like a quick uh, intro on uh, what, what I'm going to talk about. So, um, I'm from Kalimantan, I'm from Pontiana, and my dad is a doctor there, right? So, he's a general practitioner. And so, whenever someone is sick, because you know, when, when, when I was growing up like 40 years ago, there was not many specialists. So, my dad has to pull together all sorts of information from everywhere, call friends from Java everywhere to help patients in Borneo, right? So this is the idea of, you know, when we're in universities, we use it to help people in like very small, specific way. And actually, when you try to help people in like very real small ways, you realize how complicated the system is, right? You're just like, like trying to change one word in a government website. You know what I mean? It's so hard, right? Just like little things like that. So um, when I came to this, so I think the way you should think about this talk is like, you know, Professor Tichmar is talking about um, she's she's like you know uh, uh, an academic from America in, in Indonesia doing um, bridging wealth inequality, and you can think of me as the opposite, right? Like a person from Indonesia coming to America and then going into you know COVID and George Floyd and everything and trying to bridge the inequality here, bringing perspective of people from Indonesia, right? Like what do we from Indonesia have when we come to the states in the academic environment in the states that is different from what people in the states you know, approach academia. Okay. So I thank my father All right. <laughs> for the approach. Okay. So um okay, so um thank you for having me. Um this project is supported by the Fit Seeds International Funding. Um so I just talked about this. Um but okay. Wait, okay, so how did it got started? So um so my center taxi started fall twenty nineteen, but like it didn't have a it didn't have a direction, right? And then George Floyd murder happened. And in Gispia, people were just, they were crushed. They just didn't know what to do. Students were crying, students were scared, people were marching, you know, students were getting shot with rubber bullets. Mm -hmm. And they just say, I, I don't know what to do, right? And um, I didn't know what to do too. Um, but my son actually contacted an organization. My son was in Berkeley, and then he contacted an organization and he asked the organization how he can help. And I'm like, oh, Gala, you know, <laughs> like why are we not helping? So I say, so I start a Zoom, and then I say, anybody can come and you can, let's chat and then let's see what, what, what can happen. So we come we, um, June 2020, Friday noon. And then uh, we, we also, because people were very upset, right? So we meditated, we took five minutes to breathe. 
and then people felt better and then they come back and then they come back and then they come back and so from June 2020 to now we have met every Friday for two and a half years you know to, to build things so and then this is open to everyone like some of a, a whole bunch of people here are not even from Pitt. okay so from what we have be, with this open group what we learn is that what I see and what my you know black friends see are not the same things right so for example if i'm looking at a map i might think okay what is safe i think about crime rates right i think oh maybe i want to buy a house here maybe i want to live here like what is safe hmm. they don't think this yes. they think this in allegheny county there's 130 police departments 130 it's 700 square miles so what my friend blair thinks when she's driving from the Keysport up to pittsburgh is that she has to pass seven or eight police departments and if she gets pulled over she has no idea who pulled her over and what the rules are this is what she sees but this map didn't exist right okay more things so when you go to lunch you look at yelp right you look at yelp and you say oh where do i want to go to lunch and you just type something in so if you type caribbean restaurant this is what you're going to see in pittsburgh right this and this and you all know Kaya, it's not really Caribbean, but it's like a big burrito group, very fancy, you know, thousands of review. Um, so, so you see it a lot. But this is Crystal, and she's part of our, you know, part of our group. And she lives in Homewood, which is a, a neighborhood in Pittsburgh that is African American. What she sees is, I'm gonna move this so you can see it. I'll move this window so you can see it. Okay, do you see this? Do you see how many restaurants they are? Caribbean restaurants in Homewood? Okay, what happened? Anyone want to give a try? What happened? Why did it disappear? Filtered. Yes, they're filtered. People can review it, right? So they disappeared. And like, this is like a super popular one. You know, this Island Spice is very popular. It didn't even show. Because if you look at the reviews here in Yelp, a lot of the things people mention is cocktails and ambiance. This does not describe, you know, like Warung, you know, it doesn't describe the kind of restaurants you have here. So they disappear, right? So, so what I see, like what, what, what people see in data is really different depending on their reality. Okay, so how do we bridge this? Because if we don't bridge this, these guys are gonna make more and more and more money, right? These guys are going to get shut down. So technology is going to increase inequality, right? If you, if we don't do anything, then um, oops, what just happened? Uh, I want to go back one. Okay, if we don't build something here, we're going to get more and more maps like this, and we don't have maps like this, right? Okay, but. How, why don't we have maps like that? So one of the things, um, I'm gonna go to this other one. So one of the things that you might notice is that data and social justice is separate, right? So I'm talking about data science for social justice, but my student says, no, it's data science versus social justice, okay? So when you think of data science, it's the math and statistics people, right? It's um, in America, it's mostly white, otherwise it's Asian, very few black, very few Hispanics, okay? And then if they do anything that is social justice, it's very superficial. It's like, let's do a hackathon, three hours, <laughs> and then we solve the problem. It's like, no, you didn't even understand the problem, right? But that's, that's or a class project, right? Or do you do a journal article? But all of you who publish knows that if you do a journal article, what is important is it cutting edge, right? Not the, not the social impact. So if you look at social justice, like what is in social justice? It is, you know, think um, community organization, human services, health and administration services, things for the health people here. I think they got it, the we have people here. <laughs> um, social work, public administration, criminal justice, those are social justice areas. And these are the areas where you have more minorities, more people of color. But when you do data science, they do like intro, intro statistics, intro programming. Mm -hmm. And then these two groups don't match. They don't hang out, right? They don't work together. So you keep having this gap, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So if you think about 
Um, the university also, the university structure also makes it difficult for, um, for people to have real community engagement. So, for example, you know, you might start working with a community member and then you start working on something, like you build some code for them, for example, right? Semester is over, you leave, right? And there's that, okay? And then the next group, is some researcher come and then they're like, oh, let's do it together. They're like, okay, you know, I don't trust you, okay. And they didn't get the grant, and now they're really oh, sad. <laughs> right, so we keep leaving these community members behind, right? We come, we're like, oh, we promise things, then we leave. We come, we promise things, semester's over, thing is still broken, sorry, semester's over, we leave again, right? So imagine something new, imagine this. Oh, sorry, of course. <laughs> okay, imagine something new, imagine something like this, right? You work with the community, and then before you leave, you bring in another class. It's not that hard, right? You bring in another class, and then you build on top of that. This guy guides this guy to build up more and more projects, okay? And then, and then, okay, you can leave, and then someone else comes in, and this guy now helps this guy, and now you build, you continue to build this project. So now you have, you have a use, useful, you have useful um, products for the community member, okay? So, but this is very hard to build, right? Mm -hmm. This is very hard to build, and um, I want to show you why it's hard to build. So if you think of people in the university, you have students, faculty, staff member, because you have staff member in the university that is in charge of engagement, right? So they go out to the community and then they, community government relations, like all, you know? Okay, and then you have the communities themselves, right? So if you think about community themselves, like what do they need? So I'm just gonna talk about like students, the community for now, because um, students are interested, right? If you think about like students in Indonesia, like who's leading all these movements is the Mahasiswa, right? It's the students, they're very excited about this. So why is it hard for us to connect students and community in university? So community want people to solve practical problems, right? Um, and these are problems that private sector don't want to solve, government doesn't solve, right? So there is a gap. Well, the students want to help, but mainly they care about grades, right? Because they're in school. <laughs> the community needs the, the university to work with them however long it takes to solve the problem, right? The students think about semester, okay? The community doesn't have any idea about the methods that we're using. That's why they come to us. The students are just learning it, okay? Um, for the community, the context is very important. It's everything. But the students know very little about it. Also, the community, um, as you create like groups of stakeholders, it's constantly changing, right? Like you have this director you're working with, and then this director left, and then someone comes in, and then so it's an iterative process. Like you will have to keep talking, scope, try, and then bring back, and then you might change. But students are rarely taught how to do this, right? They do linear project management. They plan, they build. And then if you're lucky, they test. Sometimes they don't test. <laughs> they find they build, they're out. Okay. So obviously there's a gap between these two, right? So can faculty solve it? No. <laughs> <You're> no. <dumb. laughs> faculty wants research. <laughs> faculty, if they're working with students, they think semester. They have methods, yes, but it's for research, right? And then the context they have is mostly theoretical, and they also do linear project management. Okay. Can we bring the university engagement staff to come help? Yes or no? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. 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 Okay. The engagement staff, I'm going to get fired for this. It's mostly for <laughs> <laughs> That's why you say you have to say many. <laughs> University looks like they're engaging the community, right? There's a difference between working on the complicated stuff to engage the community and doing things that looks like you're engaging with the community, right? So, <laughs> I mean, often they overlap, but sometimes they don't, right? And so, if we think about like core incentive, because I'm a behavioral economist and I think about core incentive all the time, the core incentive is reputation. So, when they overlap, great, when they don't, 
your issues, right? They have an open timeline. They're also not on methods. So they can't link here, right? You have an engagement staff in the university. You ask them to talk about the with the professor on like scoping classes. They don't have the right language for it, right? And then, um, and then in terms of the context, they have some, um, and then they also don't do project management for academic projects, right? So we have to fill this gap, right? In Indonesia, this might look different, but we have to fill this gap. And I think, you know, us that grew up in Indonesia, we have, we're so used to practice, right? We learn everything is for practice. We learn everything is for practice. So when we come to the States, it's a little confusing, at least for me. I was like, why is everything so, you know, in such small disciplines, right? It is very, very, very fine. Like, you can only do this. You can only publish like this. This is, you're right? And then it's, it's like, and you tell about like, okay, what actually happens in the real world? They're like, it's not really your job. Your job is to, <laughs> your job is to like rigorously document the problem, right? And then we're like, okay, if you go to Indonesia, you get thrown out of the room, right? So, so I feel like when you come to the US to, to do academia, don't lose that, right? Like people are going to give you so much pressure to not think that way, but I think it's a big advantage. And I think that is what causing US universities to um, kind of drift away from community, right? Community saying, it's an elite university. It doesn't really solve our problems. So why should we pay tax for it? So you're having this, all these issues about public support for university. So, okay. So I'm just gonna, um, so my main thing is to basically present this, this problem for you. And I'm just gonna very quickly show you how Cassie works with this problem. Um, but um, it's just one way, there's many ways. And I'm really interested in talking to people to find how you work with this issue. Um, okay, so how do we work with this problem in Cassie? So, you know, you have a, you have an overall mission, which is um, using academic, um, bringing academic resources to community problems, right? So problems that the community identified and then support the solutions that the community says they want. So um, don't, don't do something that someone already is doing, and this is a lot of work. Then you have projects, right? So for example, that was our mission, and then our projects I'll show you. So one is on policing, I showed you earlier, and then the other one is on connecting a marginalized community with the university students, okay? So those are project level. But each project requires a lot of task. And then you can think about, so for example, when we were trying to connect the communities with the students, you have to first think, you have to survey the businesses and the community, right? What do you want me to connect? What aspect? What do you want me to talk about, right? How much time do you have in helping us connect you with the students? Because even if they want you to connect, they don't have time. You have to survey the students. So that's one field, like one field that is good in surveying. Then you have to think about, um, behavioral economics. You have to think about incentives. What incentive does the student have to read all the stuff and connect with the community, right? And then you have to think about algorithm design. If you're going to show the students, the community, uh, businesses from the community or organization, what kind of algorithm should you use for display? Should you show it based on just order? Should you show it based on the student's preferences? Should you show it based on the organization that the least people are seeing, so you increase equity, right? And then you have to do statistics on like, you know, you program the thing. So a lot of fields are involved when you're trying to del deliver the projects. Okay, so so this is like, you think about academic department, like, you know, English, and sociology, computer science, these are all task level that you need project managers to pull together. Okay, and then you have the role of context here. So it's gonna be circular. The, 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 real, the community members talk to, find interest, talk to, by, by the project manager, they um, get their interest. They, you figure out the match between community needs and interest, and then you create a project, and then you match it with the resources, and then you coordinate outward from the resources, um, train the project manager how to pull them together, and then subdivide them into sub-projects to classes, and then you produce something. Okay, okay. so what do we produce? Uh, so this is, this is like how the process looked. It was, remember how I had social justice on one side, data science on the other side, right? So in order to actually build this, you have to loop through both of them, like again and again and again. Um, 
going from communities, tech development, scoping, content and community, and then further development. And a lot of people were involved here. So what did we build? So for the first one, we built a scavenger hunt. Um, so as I was telling you, we have the organization tell us about what they want. Uh, so they want their social media, and they basically want more support in social media. So we asked them to write uh, challenge questions, like trivia questions from their social media, and then we put them up and we connected with PIT credits, PIT OCC credits. So you have to go to their social media to find answers, and then as you're finding these answers, you get you know honors credit or OCC credit. Mm -hmm. So you get to know this this organization, and then you get badges, and then you can if you follow the organization, you get badges, and then we take you through a scavenger hunt. Um, so we published this paper, and then the other one is the, this problem here. So what we did was we built a map, um, we collected data for all the police departments and all the data about budget, part-time officer, whether they use police bill of rights, what kind of words are in their contract, and then we create like a police contract uh, search tool. Um, also, we help people figure out what kind of areas they care about in real life, and we connect that with keywords. So, um, uh, yeah, okay, so this has also been published. Um, and so, so what I want to say is it's possible to sustain your social impact project, to not just do it one semester and then leave. Um, yeah, and then, and that's all I want to say, because I think I'm out of time. So I'm keeping time. But um, so, so all I want to say is it's possible to do this. You know, did you recognize uh, these gaps in your own projects? Were you able to sustain your projects? Um, and then what other models do we have for, for integrating community and academic work? That's it. Thank you so much. If you see me smile too much, because finally I have a strong coffee. Thank you, <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, um, Sarah, for uh, your presentations. Great presentation. And you know what? It's similar, I think, to what we talk about activism in Indonesia. Because like, uh, I think from 1996 up to like 2005, we have so much money. So one NGO get a lot of money, and then after the funding is over, no more, and the community is excited to do things. But they say, like, we have no money anymore. What should we do? So sustainability seems like you know, with, whether it's university, that's, that's the same thing. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes. Um, you know, if you have any question, or Ibu Anne, or Ibu Sarah, okay, let's come back. Ibu Ati. I'm very excited. I, I, I have questions for, for the, uh, uh, your presentations, because this is, this is very interesting. Because in my university, community engagement actually is part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it's already integrated into the requirements mm -hmm. for every student mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. So it is built into the institutions. So we have Dean of Community Engagement, actually. Wow. And we have Dean of Work. So we have a principle, we call it a triad educational programs. Uh, it is consisted of work, community engagement, and academics. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think there's difference between R1 University and liberal arts education. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, uh, written actually book chapters that uh, describe the potentials for uh, collaborating between liberal arts uh, you know, principles and the importance of community uh, engagement. So I think if we can integrate this mechanism within the context of the higher educational uh, institutions, then you know this kind of work will be able to be done more easily, right? Well, in Indonesia, we actually have like KKN, right? Community engagement. And right now, the university has been doing MBK, MBKM, right? So I think there's that uh, opportunity as well to integrate this community engagement uh, uh, elements into the MBKM because with MBKM we encourage uh, the universities to have community engagements and students to do internship and so on. So
So uh, yeah, that's what I wrote in my uh, uh, chapter is that there is a potential mm -hmm. for combining liberal arts education, community engagement, and MBKM, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think this is a very uh, inspiring stuff. And for me, in my sociology courses, I've been doing this for many, many years because, well, as a sociologist, you know, you have to go to the community and work with them. And we also uh, perceive community partner as co-educators. Mm -hmm. So it's not just partners, they are also educators because practical, you know, hands-on and experiential learning is very important uh, elements in the process of education, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the move toward experiential learning is another impetus, I think, for, uh, you know, for, the, for this kind of work. So I, I will be happy to talk more with, with <laughs> you and maybe able to collaborate uh, in, in this kind of uh, project. So yeah. let's let's talk more about it. <laughs> well, this is fabulous. We have, we have listened to four strong women, <laughs> <laughs> and they're really into community engagement. Uh, uh, to me, what I hear from you, from also presenters, mm -hmm. it sounds like there's two topics, and like the UN has. You know, both of these topics are big. They require maybe big data as well. <laughs> but the common, I think, the commonality in terms of the importance of interdisciplinary connection in terms of whether it gets different field, also whether a different, um, you know, as you mentioned, sociology and Sarah, it's a different field. So that's one. And then also um, sustainability, because you have been working in this field for over two decades, right? And that's something that I want to ask you later on. Um, so. What I'm saying is that, um, well, we have three panel session until up to five, and I was hoping that even though um, the keynote speaker will finish now, uh, I hope that there will continue conversation. Right, Jamil's not here, but by Jamil, for example, will be in the same um, parallel with Ibu Ake and the So I hope that uh, discussion with gender will also continue in the next session. So. In the next session, uh, so after this we'll have lunch, and after and after that we'll have panel session that are all online. So I hope that well, online means you know that might be some rooms may be empty, there might be other people come. So I hope that uh, you can participate and come. But before we go, let's uh, give a little bit of appreciation to our great team of speakers. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Sarah Linardi, do you mind coming front and go and Dr. Anne is my head? We just have a tiny, Baba will give this. Oh. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> uh, so, as a non profit organization, we cannot give much, but we really <laughs> appreciate um, the help and also the knowledge that you shared. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.